everybody, and welcome to the Ultimate Job Search and Career Podcast. I'm Bill, the company's expert, and I don't care who you are or what you're doing. I already know that you are awesome. You are here. You are self-improving. That's all I need to know. Thank you for watching my video. Now, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to adjust to a new job. And this question was sent in to me um, by one of my awesome viewers. This is from an individual known as Gangsta Naps. That's a great name. And Gangsta Naps says, Hey Bill, awesome content as usual. Why, thank you. Do you have any tips for persons who have successfully landed a job and are adjusting to it? Specifically, the period of probation. Would be enlightening if you could address this in a later video. You, sir, are awesome. Well, thank you very much, Gangsta Naps. You know exactly how to flatter somebody and that gets you quite far in this world, surprisingly. Um, so yes, we will be covering that today. In fact, let's get into it. So the probation period, okay? If you have been hired, you've started at your new job, and uh, you're wondering you know, what the probationary period is, I mean, first of all, it depends. Everybody loves that answer. Uh, it's gonna depend on the job you have. It depends on the complexity of the job, but, Six months is typical, okay? It will likely be less than that if you have a lower level kind of worker type job. Um, if you have a management type job, it'll likely be more than that. Usually one year is typical for like a general manager or something like that. If you are running some kind of business unit or business operation, whether that's 10 people or 100 people, usually one year is kind of minimum um, for that. Uh, what I've seen happen several times and have experienced is uh, usually if you are managing something on your own and there's a lot of, uh, you know, profit and loss, risk and all this kind of stuff, uh, one year is kind of considered probation uh, in the sense that for the first year you're going to be shadowing somebody. Okay, you're going to be learning the ropes, learning the people, learning how things are done there, learning the history, learning the reasoning behind why they do things the way they do. And then after that year, you are expected to start making decisions, start making some small changes, uh, and so on. Okay, and that's kind of how those type jobs work. And then everything under that type of job, if you are, uh, like I say, a, a technical expert or something like that. It's going to be less time. Uh, so that's why I say six months typical, okay, for, for a probation period for, um, you know, the adjustment and that kind of thing. Um, now, let's talk about a few things here about how to do this, because uh, this is where I think it gets interesting. Uh, number one, you know, the thing about starting a new job is that uh, if you're working in a new organization, chances are the culture is going to be quite different, okay? Uh, this isn't always the case, but this is typical that it is. They have their own way of doing things, and it's going to be probably quite different from the way things were done in your previous job, okay? Uh, that's typical, okay? Different organizations have their own way of doing things, their own priorities, all this kind of stuff, okay? Um, now, what this means is that if you start your new job, okay, a good thing to do is to kind of get rid of a lot of preconceived notions, okay? You may have done your job before, you may have been quite good at it, but that doesn't mean that you can necessarily come in and just assume that everything is going to work exactly the way you were used to, the expectations are going to be exactly the same as they were before, and the way everybody behaves and reacts to you is going to be exactly the same way as, you, as uh, you've experienced before, okay? Uh, if you do assume that it's going to be exactly the same, you're probably going to run into a lot of friction, okay? Um, and it might not be good, okay? So for that reason, if you're adjusting to a new job, you really have to open your mind. Um, people that have had one career job Maybe they got one job out of school and they've been there for over 10 years. When they change jobs, it comes as a real culture shock to them, okay? People that have had multiple professional jobs, uh, they've worked for two years here, five years here, four years there, seven years there, and so on. 
when they change jobs, they know that, you know, there's going to be a lot of change and there's going to be a lot of different expectations and a different culture. And they're, they're used to that idea and they are capable of changing quite easily. Okay. Um, so they have a bit of an edge, but if you've only had one job for many years and that's the only thing you've ever known. Okay. A lot of times people fall into the mental trap of thinking that that's the only way things can be done. And they're in for a shock. <laughs> okay. So if you're adjusting, a great thing to do is have an open mind. Don't be too stubborn. Be open to learning how these people go about doing it, whether it's better or worse. Okay. And being open to that, being receptive to that and not resisting simply because you're used to a different way of doing things. Okay. Um, Trust me, if I had had that advice like 30 years ago, um, my life would have been a bit easier. Um, <clears throat> so that's the first thing I want to say when you're adjusting to a new job. Number two, a really good tip is to talk to your new boss on a regular basis. Okay. Seek them out. And if you can, what would be ideal would be to get 30 minutes in one continuous block once a week with your boss. Okay. Get feedback ask questions, get suggestions. This is what I highly recommend. Okay. Don't wait for you to get in trouble. And then someone tells you how they prefer you to do it. Proactively go talk to your boss and say like, look, you know, how are things going? Am, am I doing things kind of the way you want? Would you like it this way or that way? Do you have any suggestions for me? Um, you know, I've been wondering about this or that. Could you help answer this question? You know, that will get you far. Number one, it will give you some direct, uh, you know, information with which to improve. And secondly, it also signals to your boss that you're a good employee. You care. You're trying to improve. You're trying to do it the best you can. And that's what, you know, most bosses want. That's what they look for. And that's what they value. Okay. So you're getting a lot of brownie points right there. Uh, you know, they're going to, in their mind, they're instantly going to regard you as a good employee. Uh, which doesn't always happen, especially if you get a boss that inherited you rather than hired you. Okay. Um, so that's a big deal. Okay. So that's what I'd recommend. Make sure you go talk to your boss on a regular basis, be proactive, get feedback and, uh, just communicate. The more communication you have with the boss, with your boss, the better you will do, the better their impression of you will be. Okay. Um, that's particularly valuable if they have a formal probation period. Some organizations have that. They have like a formal kind of thing. It's, it's written into your contract. Other organizations, it might not be a formal thing, but informally, they kind of regard anyone who's been there for less than a year or less than six months, you know, as like on trial. They're, they're not really trusted yet. They're not, re they haven't really proven themselves. Okay. Um, so it could be a more of an, an informal thing and there's no real way for you to find this out. Um, but you can assume it to be there. Okay. So talk to your boss and on a regular basis and get that. Um, and then the third sort of thing I'd like to address here is if you are adjusting to a new job, okay, go out of your way to try and connect with your coworkers. I know this seems self-evident, uh, you know, it's not rocket science, but you know, depending on your personality type, you may be like me, you might be an introvert. Uh, this isn't the type of thing you do for fun, right? I mean, if people are super friendly and they're like, they get right in your face and they're like, hey, you know, it's awesome that you're here, you know, like you're doing that really well, you know, that's great. But unless they do that kind of stuff, you going to them and approaching them and trying to strike up a conversation and try and make friends that might not be uh, the most natural thing for some people. And, uh, because of that, and because, you know, it's a new place and it's unfamiliar, they might be a little nervous. Uh, they tend not to do that. Okay. Big mistake. I recommend you just sort of just push yourself a little out of your comfort zone, make the effort, try to uh, get to know people, just say hello uh, ask them a few questions about them. Okay. And that usually gets people talking, especially if it's something that they want to talk about. Okay. If you see them in the lunchroom and they're reading a book or they're playing a card game or they're, you know, whatever, ask them about it. You know, 
if they're reading a book, it's like, hey, you know, what's what's that book? You know, are you into that? Is that horror? Is that thriller? Like, you know, I've never read that stuff before. You know, do you are you a big fan of that? You know, whatever. Like, get them talking about something that they like. Okay. Um, another part of this, and I kind of, uh, I'm a little hesitant to say this, but you know, it still is a thing depending on where you work. When a new person joins the group. Okay, there might be a culture there where they they feel out the new person a little bit. Okay, I wouldn't go as far as to say they were hazed, but you know, they're kind of, you know, they're kind of messed with perhaps a little bit in good fun just to kind of feel out the new person. Okay, if that does happen and that's the environment in which you find yourself, okay, my advice is just try and have a sense of humor about it. Okay, if it's totally crossing the line that that's another thing okay i'm not talking about that i'm just talking about there's like a little you know little humor you know po- you know they're sort of poked at you and stuff like that just try and try and not take it too seriously just have a sense of humor about it usually uh when you have that kind of stuff people if you react in that way as opposed to getting like super defensive about like some little tiny comment that somebody makes or whatever um you know, it can do, it can break the ice. It can show people, you know, yeah, I'm cool, you know, and then you're, you're in their little social group, right? And you're accepted. Okay. So if that does happen, try not to get super um, defensive and aloof about things. Try and just, you know, kind of, you know, be open for, you know, some social interaction and, uh, you know, try and try and reach out to people and connect with others okay it is to your advantage to do that okay if you stay apart from everybody and you're not you know you wait for them to want to integrate you rather than you trying to approach them and integrate yourself uh it can work out worse for you okay so that's what i'll say i mean obviously you got to feel it out obviously there's a it's very hard to give one size fits all advice for all situations but but just as a general rule try to do that especially if you're an introvert and this stuff does not come naturally okay um so that's what i have to say so uh hopefully that makes sense thank you very much to uh my good friend gangsta naps <laughs> for sending in this question and for uh, all the compliments uh compliments will get you far in life um and that's great to see so thank you all for listening i hope you uh found this informative and if you didn't thank you for listening this long anyway <laughs> i hope to see you again on the next episode of the ultimate job search and career podcast take care of yourselves until next time